underestimated. You know, it was it, it wasn't something that I wanted, but now it's something I actually appreciate because I just think in every job I've ever had, I've been underestimated, but for me, I see it as a challenge. It's a great way to prove to people that they're wrong. And so, you know, I was underestimated when I ran for the legislature the first time. I was underestimated when I ran for governor. I certainly was underestimated when I took the job for ambassador, but I don't think that's a reason to be offended. I think it's a reason to challenge yourself to work twice as hard to prove to people that you deserve to be there. Mm. You talk so far most about your time in South Carolina, and your, the story in your book has many interesting twists and turns, but can you tell us a little bit how you were plucked from the governorship of South Carolina to be our ambassador to the United Nations? So I actually knew the president um, prior to being asked to be ambassador. I, he, after I won governor the first time, after I won the primary the first time, I got this white envelope with this great gold trim, <laughs> and there was a support check, and there was a note that said, you're a winner. And so it was from the president at the time. And so I had um, met with, talked to him, had met with him on a couple of occasions, so I knew him. And then you fast forward to 2016, we had a lot of talent on that stage, 16 candidates. I put my name and support behind a different candidate. And it was about that time that he tweeted, Nikki Haley is an embarrassment to South Carolina. <laughs> in which I responded in a tweet back to him and said, bless your heart. <laughs> so I knew that when he's kicked, he howled. He knew that when I was pushed, I pushed back. There was just a respect we had for each other. And then, um, you know, once he won the primary, I supported him in the general, and then I get a call from Ryan's Priebus, and Ryan's calls and says, Nikki, the president-elect wants to see you tomorrow morning in New York, need you to come, and I said, for what? And he said he wants to talk to you about Secretary of State. And I said, Secretary of State? I said, Ryan's, I'm a governor. I can't be Secretary of State. And he said, well, he wants to talk to you about it. So I go to Trump Tower. Soon as I walk in, he says, well, I guess your guy didn't win. Because <laughs> he can't let anything go. He can't let it go. So I give him his moment, let him relish in the wind. And then I said, look, I'm not your person. I said, there's too much going on in the world. You don't need someone with a learning curve, but I want to be supportive of you. I'm willing to help in any way that I can to help you find someone. Fast forward, Wrights calls back again a few days later. He said, don't say anything, I just need you to listen. U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations. I said, Wrights, I don't even know what the United Nations does, I just know everybody hates it. <laughs> he, said, well, he said, well, the President's gonna call you on Monday, I need you to be ready with an answer. So my husband, I go home that night, my husband's looking on the computer, says, Nikki, I think you'd be really good at this. <laughs> you know, it wasn't, the, it wasn't the right time. My son had just turned 15. Our daughter just started college. My husband, Michael, and I, we take care of my parents. They're both in their 80s. They live with us. My mom has Parkinson's. So it was just not an easy time to move. So the president calls on Monday, and he said, all right, Nick, are you going to do this? And I said, well, sir, there would have to be some some conditions if I'm gonna take this. And he said, like what? And I said, well, after being governor, I don't wanna work for anyone else. I would wanna work directly with you, so it would need to be a cabinet position. He said, done, what else? <laughs> I said, well, I'm a policy girl, so I'd wanna be in the room when decisions are made, so I'd need to be on the National Security Council. He said, done, what else? <laughs> I said, well, I'm not gonna be a wallflower or a talking head. I need to be able to say exactly what I think. And he said, Nikki, that's exactly why I want you to do this. And he was true to his word from the first day to the last day. I'd like to uh, read one of the lines I 